Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is about the Bortle Scale. What is it? How does it work? Should you rely on it? And is it an accurate scale? I've mentioned the Bortle Scale many times in previous episodes, but just in case you're not familiar with it, I'll tell you where it came from and how it works. The Bortle Scale came from an article written by amateur astronomer John Bortle for Sky and Telescope Magazine's February 2001 issue, so it's quite dated now. In the article, John Bortle sought to quantify sky darkness from any observing site by using a 1 to 9 scale, with 1 being the darkest place on Earth and 9 being the most light polluted. A Bortle 1 might be somewhere like the Okavango Delta in Botswana, and Bortle 9 might be downtown Las Vegas. In the article, John Bortle specifically described what would place any given observing site in his 1 through 9 categories based on whether you can see various objects in the night sky. The Milky Way, certain phenomenon like zodiacal light, and also with each category corresponding to the naked eye limiting magnitude scale or NELM. John Bortle did not mention the sky quality meter or SQM, but his categories can be matched to SQM readings, and I'll add those to his descriptions. The SQM scale and the NELM are both described by me in a previous video that I made about measuring sky quality in general, and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below in case you want to watch that. But briefly, the NELM, or naked eye limiting magnitude, is when you assess how dark the skies are where you observe by looking at the zenith and determining what is the faintest star you can see with your naked eye. More on that later. I'm going to summarize the categories in John Bortle's scale, and I'll put his full description from the article in the description below. In a Bortle 1, you can see the Gegenschein. You can see zodiacal light and the zodiacal band. Those are all caused by sunlight reflecting off of interplanetary dust. And also you can see air glow, a very faint naturally occurring glow um, seen within 15 degrees of the horizon. The Milky Way core casts a shadow. Looking at Venus and Jupiter will ruin your dark adaptation and you can see many Messier objects with your naked eye, including the elusive Triangulum Galaxy M33. And you can see stars up to magnitude 7.6 to magnitude 8 with difficulty. Portal 1 corresponds to an SQM of 21.76 to 22, and 22 is the darkest sky possible. In a Bortle 2, the zodiacal light casts a shadow. You can see the Gegenschein, and you can sort of see air glow. It's hard to see your surroundings. The Milky Way is structured, and many Messier objects are naked eye visible, including M33. And it corresponds to an NELM of 7.1 to 7.5, and an SQM of 21.6 to 21.75. In a Bortle 3, you can see color in the zodiacal light. Your surroundings are vaguely visible. The Milky Way core appears complex. M15, M4, M5, and M22 are naked eye visible, and M33 is visible with averted vision. You can see stars up to magnitude 6.6 .6 to 7, and it corresponds to SQM 21.4 to 21.6. In a Bortle 4, light domes are visible in several directions. You can still see the zodiacal light, but not the, to the horizon. And clouds are illuminated by light sources. You can see your surroundings easily. The Milky Way is impressive, but it lacks detail. M33 is difficult to see with averted vision. And you can see stars of magnitude 6.3 to 6.5. And it corresponds to SQM 20.8 to 21.3. A Bortle 5 is a suburban sky with only hints of the zodiacal light. The Milky Way is very weak or nearly invisible and it's washed out overhead. 
light sources are evident in most directions. The clouds are noticeably brighter than the sky itself. The NELM is 5.6 to 6, and abortal 5 would correspond to SQM 20.3 to 21.3. Abortal 6 has no trace of the zodiacal light. The Milky Way is only apparent toward the zenith. The sky is grayish white, and clouds in the sky are bright and you have no trouble seeing your accessories on the observing table. M33 is impossible to see without binoculars. The NELM is about 5.5, and Abortal 5 corresponds to SQM 19.25 to 20.3. Abortal 7 is the suburban urban transition zone. The entire sky is grayish white. The Milky Way is totally invisible. M44 and M31 are indistinct. Clouds are brilliantly lit. Even in moderate-sized telescopes, the brightest Messier objects are palish. The NELM is 5 if you try really hard, and the SQM is about 18 or 19. A Bortle 8 is a city sky with the sky whitish gray or orange even. M31 and M44 may be barely glimpsed, but only the brightest Messier objects are detectable with a modest-sized telescope. The constellations are missing or difficult to see. You can see stars down to magnitude 4.5, maybe, and the SQM is 17 or 18. Bortle Class 9 is an inner city sky. The whole sky is brightly lit, even at the zenith. Aside from maybe the Pleiades, no Messier objects are visible to the unaided eye. The only things you can really see in the telescope are the moon, the planets, and a few of the brightest star clusters, if you can even find them. The NELM is 4, maybe. The SQM is 16 or 17. So that's the Bortle scale, as described by John Bortle in the original article with my notations of the SQM, which he didn't include in the article. So is the Bortle scale helpful? Of course it is. It's a handy way to refer to the darkness of your skies. John Bortle said in the introductory paragraph of his now famous article that he wanted to create accurate criteria for judging sky conditions because he said, due to growing light pollution, most modern stargazers have never seen a truly dark sky sight and they don't have a good frame of reference. Well, that's true. Many people have never been to a truly dark sky site, and many people have never even seen the Milky Way at all. So these categories would give that person a good way to quantify sky darkness by looking at the sky and seeing what objects in the categories they can and can't see. But as I see it, there are two problems with the Bortle scale. One is that the Bortle scale, like the NELM, relies on your vision. Some people might be able to see magnitude 6 stars, while another person might only be able to see a magnitude 5 star. And they're both looking at the same sky, but it's seen differently due to variations in their vision. So neither the Bortle scale nor the NELM can ever be entirely accurate. According to John Bortle, in a Bortle 4 site, you can see stars of magnitude 6.3 to 6.5, and you can see M33 <laughs> with averted vision. Well, I can just tell you anecdotally from my own personal experience that I've only ever seen M33 with my naked eye one time, and that was in Big Bend National Park in Texas, which is a Bortle 1 site. I think you'd have to have extremely good eyesight to see M33 naked eye from a Bortle 4 site. I've tried to see it from my driveway in Montana, which is a Bortle 3 approaching Bortle 4, and I can't see it. John Bortle said that the NELM relied on your vision, and he warned a scale that would be more accurate, but his scale <laughs> depends on your vision also. The second problem with the Bortle scale and it's not John Bortle's fault, is that I think most people don't stare at the zenith with star chart in hand and try to figure out what's the dimmest star they can see to determine the NELM. 
I think most people just become aware while looking at the sky that there are many stars on the star chart that they just can't see. And in a general way, they know that some dim stars are just out of reach. Or maybe someone just uses an app like Sky Safari to tell you where your observing site falls on the Bortle scale. Or you might look it up on something like lightpollutionmap.info or the app Zasteria list Bortle rating, something like that. And the problem with that is that lightpollutionmap.info is 10 years old and it's based on obsolete data. The underlying data for the map is calculated using a model using one of NOAA's satellites, but it's not current and it's not in real time. According to lightpollutionmap.info, for example, Buck Meadows, California, a place I visited recently, and I took an SQM of 21.0, comes up as a Bortle 2 site. Well, a Bortle 2 site should correspond to SQM 21.6 to 21.7, which highlights that light pollution is a rapidly increasing problem, not reflected in 10-year-old data. Zasteria says that they rely on data from the 2015 New World Atlas, the 10-year-old atlas mentioned above, that's woefully out of date. There's also lightpollutionmap.app that looks a little more accurate, but even that um, light pollution map can't keep up with the growing light pollution problem. Where I live in southwest Montana, the population has exploded in the past 10 years, and I can barely get an SQM of 21.3 most nights. Yet, according to Zasteria and lightpollutionmap.info, I'm in a Bortle 3. Maybe this house was a Bortle 3 10 years ago when I bought it, but believe it's rapidly approaching Bortle 4. My vision's not that great. I need glasses to see uh, dimmer stars, but I can't remember the last time I saw a magnitude 6 star from my driveway in Montana. On the best nights, I can see a magnitude 5, maybe 5.5 star, which according to John Bortle, <laughs> puts me in a Bortle 5. <laughs> but my observing area doesn't fit well in his categories because I can see the Milky Way very well. It's structured and has detail. I can see M31, naked eye. M33, I can't see it. I can see M13, naked eye, if I try very hard. I can't see the zodiacal light. It's in the direction of town. Maybe it's just that he put too many things in each category and it's not that simple. So is the portal scale useful? <laughs> yes, it is. It's a shorthand way to refer to the darkness of your skies. But the best way to know the quality of your observing location is to look up and see what you can see. Can you see the Andromeda galaxy naked eye? Can you see M33 naked eye? Can you see any Messier objects naked eye, like M13? Can you see structure in the Milky Way? Can you see the Milky Way at all? Can you see the zodiacal light? So judge for yourself on the sky darkness, or if you want a scientific way to judge sky quality, use a sky quality meter. But be sure to take six measurements and average them out and point it to the zenith. That way you get an accurate reading. The first one's usually inaccurate. So the portal scale, it's useful. It's one way to quantify sky darkness, but it's only as accurate as your own personal observations of the sky where you observe, not what a 10-year-old atlas says. Take your own measurements with your own eyes and record them. You might be surprised to see the sky darkness change quickly over time and not in a good way. <laughs> like the hobby of visual astronomy itself, knowing your observing site's sky darkness depends on careful study of the sky and noting what you can and can't see. Just like you know when you're in a Bortle 1 where the sky is palpable, it's pulsating with stars and objects and meteors. Likewise, you know when you're in a Bortle 8 or 9. 
you can see the planets, you can see the moon, you can see Orion in wintertime, and maybe the Big Dipper, but not much else. But there's a sky full of variation in between. And where you land in the space between might not be as high on the Bortle scale as you previously thought. And maybe that's not because there's anything wrong with the Bortle scale. It's because light pollution is so pervasive that it's extremely hard to find a Bortle 1, a Bortle 2, or even a Bortle 3 these days. The very point that John Bortle most wanted to emphasize in his article. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the Bortle scale. One more thing before I go. In a recent episode, I said you could see M33 with your naked eye, but I would like to know if any of you have seen M33 naked eye and when and where you saw it. Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.